Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I'm trying to get situated. I turned on the camera initially and I had the window behind me and you couldn't see me because it's the morning time for once. Live with Loka. Um, I hope you're doing well this morning. Um, I know some people had, good morning, Angela. Um, I know some people had conflicts with church, um, but I, everybody's gonna have a conflict at some point. And so I'm trying to vary the times of day that I'm doing these and the days of the week that I'm doing them. So um, on this Sunday morning at nine o'clock, well, nine o'clock for me in Central Standard Time, um, it's a really pretty day in Louisiana. Super, super pretty. I went, I already went to Starbucks. I got a tea. What's your favorite Starbucks drink? Hola, you guys. My favorite ever, it's like the double cup one, is a London Fog because it's like Earl Grey tea. And then um, they put, um, I get it with soy milk, so they like brew the tea just like a little bit and then they put soy milk on top steamed soy milk and it's so delicious and then i of course add extra sweetener so instead of the four pumps that they normally do i always get six so so delicious um okay so today um i received several emails this week um asking me what i meant by a sorry i'm really bothered by my hair so i'm just trying to fix it um, asking what I meant by a CI cheer squad um, and community and what that means is basically a community around you so it's different from last week's community I'm not talking about building the community in your classroom I'm talking about within the community around you building a support system who not only support you, but who really know and get what it is you do as a CI teacher. Hello, good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Don. Hello, Christina. Um, and uh, Avital, that is such a pretty name. Um, so it's building um, the community around you and um, making sure that they are not only supportive of you, but really get it, get what, what it is you do and why you do it. Um, because the more people who are on board with you and really get it, the more they can help you um, win. If you have a whole team of parents who already get it, and there's one who's like, I really don't understand, hi Disney, I really don't understand what this new French teacher is doing. If you have a community already of people who can, because you're not, of people who can stick up for you. They can say, oh, well, it's this really cool method and it's about acquisition over learning and the kids are actually learning how to be proficient communicators and um, it actually ends up being less work for you. It's more work on the, up, um, the upfront part because you're having to um, build that community and cheer squad. But once you have it, it makes your life so much easier. So um, what, um, that's just to give you a background of what it is we're doing. Um, and we're going to talk about all the different communities or cheer squads you need to build because it's kind of a project. Um, but you can start right at the beginning of the year. And even if you've already started your year, you can, you can start now. Um, and the first community is the one that you, the community that you work with, um, your faculty. Um, I am an island this year. We hear that term a lot. Um, and in a lot of ways, I think, and a lot of people will disagree with me, but these are always my opinions. In a lot of ways, I think being an island is easier than being on a team of teachers. Now, I'm, I'm coming from a school where I was on a team of CI teachers but it took us years to build that and get to a point where we were a team of CI teachers. Um, so when you, and I know there are so many of you out there in this boat, if you are in the boat where you get CI and you 
are eager to start and you know it's what works for kids and you're so excited, but you're on a team of people who are totally against you and who are legacy teachers who um, believe that the textbook curriculum they've been using has worked. It's put kids through AP Spanish. No, the retention isn't always great, but not all kids get language. Not all kids are cut out for language. No. If you speak a language, English, you're a language person. Everybody can acquire a second language. It's all about how we're taught it, right? But these are the people who don't believe that. They believe that there are, just like there are math and science people, there are language people. Or you're either a language person or you're not, which is BS. Um, so you, working, in my opinion, as an island where you don't have to compete with people is easier. And I know it sucks because of collaboration, like lack thereof, um, and frustrations with who, I mean, with not being able to share things, but we have an enormous community on Facebook, on Twitter. Like there's, I mean, I can, I'm not an island at all. I have thousands of you to collaborate with. Um, so you got to work first on your community within your building. Yes, I know this is an enormous, daunting project if you have people who are totally against you. And sometimes it takes years. It took years in the previous school I was at. But progress happens if you're determined and relentlessly positive. Um, so a lot of times it's like them getting your kids and realizing, wow, they may not know their grammar rules, but they really are proficient speakers. And maybe they won't admit that right away. Maybe they'll insist that they go back to Spanish one. But if you've worked hard enough on your students and your parent community, they'll start to revolt because they know they are better than level one. So they'll start to do that work for you. Um, and it's really amazing what happens. So within your own community, one of the best ways um, found you, forgot to be in the app, that's okay. Hi, mommy and daddy. Um, Johanna, thank you. I sometimes like my cat. Not right now when he won't leave me alone. Um, thank you. I love my nails too. You guys, I just got these new sticky things from a friend, and I'm not going to promote them yet until I, just, I see how long they last because I have really awful nail beds. But if these last, I am stoked. I'm really excited about that. Um, okay, so... One easy way to build your community um, is actually something I just recently did um, with my school. And it's something that you'll have to like kind of beg for or maybe suggest um, for your next um, all faculty PD. If you can break with your department. So like we did it with just the middle school. Um, and since we have a small middle school, we're just starting. Um, you could break it into grades if you wanted to, depending on how big your school is. But we did rotations. And each, we were in each other's classrooms for 20 minutes apiece. You could even do 10 minutes. You could do 10 minutes. We were in each other's classrooms for 20 minutes. Um, and we rotated to classrooms. And in the, that 20 minutes, we were asked to give a snapshot. It could be a snapshot from the first week of school and like teaching routines. It could be a snapshot of um, something you do at the end of the year. It could be a snapshot of an individual activity that you're doing. Um, and I chose to do like a mid-year movie talk um, because movie talk is frequently something that kids talk about because it's about funny YouTube videos. And so they're going into the other classrooms like, oh, we watched this YouTube video in my ASTRAS class about whatever. And then people are like, um, what? you watched a YouTube video and everybody's laughing and talking about it and talking about it in English, of course, because they're in another class. And without context, that's one of the first times that teachers are like, what are you really doing in, in your Spanish class? So that's why I chose to do a movie talk. And... What well, the beautiful part of it was half of my faculty 
are brand new to Spanish. So they, they even wrote on their reflections for me, like, whoa, this is really rigorous. Like, I, I'm focusing so hard. I'm really, really concentrating. This is hurting my brain. Is my attention compromised? Which is amazing because they're realizing that even though I told them when they came in the room, they had their little reflection forms to take notes, because that's what we were doing in all the other classrooms. I was like, sorry, you can take them at the end. I need all of your pencils, papers, everything under your chair or next to you. You can't touch it. And so already it was a big shift, especially for teachers. But then they realized that if they didn't do that, mom, if you touch that angry face, somebody just touched an angry face. It's probably mom or dad. I hope it was. Don, I need your hearts. Don, where are the hearts? Where is the love? Um, so without that um, paper, they realize that even if they're not note-taking, doing nothing but focusing on me, it's incredibly rigorous. Thank you. Um, it's incredibly rigorous to listen. Thank you, Don. <laughs> um, it's incredibly rigorous to listen to your second language when I'm speaking 95% of the time, just with that. And I, I stuck with le gusta, likes, and prefers. That's it. And I introed this movie talk. I got everybody up. We did four corners with like, do you like ice cream, cake, um, snowballs, or steak? got them up they were in different corners and they were loving it they loved it and they realized how rigorous it was and it was an automatic shift people were already supportive of me at my new school but it was an automatic shift they were like oh my gosh your energy has to be so on you were on a hundred percent of the time you made us be on a hundred percent of the time you were holding us accountable for a hundred percent response when I wasn't you were positive and you were saying okay that was about 80 I need a hundred percent those of us who had a little bit of background knowledge you let us speak you praised us it, it and it, for a couple of people it made them nervous like they had to but my pushback to that was this is mid-year the kids would know they don't have to speak I'm never gonna force them to output um, but immediately my community and cheer squad went from awesome. We have Louisiana Foreign Language Teacher of the Year. She knows what she's doing. She's passionate about her method. She knows it works for building proficiency to, oh my gosh, that's what she does. My principal was walking down the hallway later that day and she goes, Maestra, again, killer job today. I am confident we are going to have fluent speakers of Spanish by eighth grade. And I'm like, yeah, duh. I get them every single day from fifth grade on. And actually, I'm starting with third grade this year because we I need to be a full-time FTE. So they, I'm starting with third grade. And I see third grade four times a week. So yeah, by eighth grade, oh my God, what I'm going to be able to do with them. 50 minutes a day? Oh my God. Um, so it's okay if you did it on accident. I just, I get nervous when I see the angry faces. Um, so um, it is so great to have support. It makes our jobs not only great, but so much easier, right? So once I have my start, start building that community, the beautiful thing is I just did that for middle school, but it trickles. So all of us, got to be in each other's classrooms, I immediately was like, I am so jealous of my fifth grade babies. They're going to have the best day ever. Mr. Alex in the innovators workshop, I made a simple engine. I made, I made it. And I'm, I was actually certain when I went in there that I wouldn't be able to do whatever he was asking me to do. I made a simple engine and like created an art machine in 20 minutes. In art class, we were like analyzing graffiti. It was the coolest thing. In math, 
I led one of the examples and math gives me so much anxiety because I sucked at math in school and I got to lead one of the examples that pushed me so hard in our like music class we all sang together and pretended to like take care of our violin we were learning violin steps in the humanities course we created hopes and dreams and I'm totally stealing her idea for displaying them like it's not just you you're becoming a cheer squad for your whole team so you're really building that community which is amazing but it also creates a trickle effect because all day all of us were talking with other faculty in other departments about our morning experience so they're talking about this wild language experience they had and that kids will be having and people are starting to be curious so then the next step is and this is really brave and this takes a lot of guts but it's really important you have to i am really lucky to have that much contact time um okay i'll talk to you about fifth graders um you have to then follow up with this isn't just today i would love for you to pop into my classroom anytime that's even bolder like i recognize saying my classroom is an open door is huge <laughs> and scary but in my opinion i'm doing great teaching or what i hope is great teaching all the time not just when i know that i'm going to have somebody observe and in my new school that is the culture and expectation because i will be observed every single day by my coach i have my own coach <laughs> and almost every single day my principal is going to be in my room i never know when they're going to come I don't know what class, I don't know what time, they're just gonna be in there. So, and part of what's, what I'm lucky with is because I grew up as a teacher under Diana Noonan in the Denver Public Schools, and know some of you are tired of hearing that from me, but she's really built in me that confidence of, no, you're gonna have observers, and sometimes you're gonna rock it, and sometimes it's gonna bomb, and that's part of teaching and growing and learning. And um, fail, fail again, fail better. So you will be observed, yes, as your first year. Yes, you're going to be observed. And yes, it's going to be unannounced. And sometimes it'll be 15 people in the back of your room, sometimes one. That's the way it is. And it helped me so much because now I'm like, please come and observe anytime. I'd love to have you. Please, no, 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 I don't need an email. Please just come, just walk in. I'd love to have you. And it's built this, oh, if any of you like Doctor Who, look at this. Oh my gosh, right? It's such a cool dress. Um, so it's automatically built this culture of my door is open. I want people to observe. I want people to see what I'm doing. And with that safe community, um, people tend to realize that they can and should be doing the same thing because it feels really good to get feedback. And in my new school, it's more than just positive feedback. It's more than just positive feedback. It's, um, it's push. They are encouraged. Everybody that comes into my room, they're gonna give me like praises and pushes every single time. And I've already been pushed in so many ways around so many things, I'm so excited. I'm gonna be so much a better teacher at the end of the year. Oh my gosh. And then in two weeks, I'm gonna be so much a better teacher, it's crazy. So um, invite people to be in your room um, because it's just gonna build more of a, um, a powerful community. I have a new dynamic at my school. Counselors tell me students what my, counselors tell me students what my Spanish class, students tell me during class change they prefer my class. Oh, students tell me during class change they prefer my class over the other teacher. CI for the win, but I feel weird for the other teacher. Oh my gosh, this is so hard, but so common. Hi, my friend. Um, it's so common because it's one of the most powerful ways to create a shift to CI in your school when there's somebody else who's more traditional. 
because the kids start shouting out for the CI. They're like, but in my other class, we were speaking in Spanish. We weren't talking about Spanish in English. My other class, my teacher told me you don't learn Spanish with rules. My, my Spanish teacher in my other class said you can't learn Spanish like other subjects. You have to acquire it. So if you give them that pop-up theory throughout the year built in, they know how to advocate for language acquisition themselves. And then it doesn't have to be you fighting a battle, but it can get frustrating and ugly because perhaps that teacher just doesn't know. But hopefully if they're like a little bit open, they can, you can say, you're welcome to come see how it works in my class if you're curious. And if you're not too forceful about it, but rather just open, maybe you can like slowly bring them on board. Um, once I made the district observers part of my class, isn't it fun to bring observers as like actors and stuff? Mark Mullaney made me the fart in his story one time. I was observing at the back of the room and his kids were so used to seeing me that year because I practically lived in the back of his room. And one day the one of the kids in the story farted in the car and he's like, maestra. And he brought me up and I was the fart and I had to fly out of this, the, the back of this car when the kid farted. It was so embarrassing. Um, my door is always open. Come in. I know my dress is so cool. Um, yay. Um, yeah, my cat. Oh my God. He's such a butt. He's such a butt. Say hi, Diz. Where are you going? Oh my God. See, he's so obnoxious. He's sitting with my cricket now. Diz, say hi. You're so rude. Why are you being rude? Okay. Um, we had our first parent night the other night. I had three minutes to get each group of grade level parents to run down to my class. Their jaw dropped when I told them to please come visit and see what we really do. So much feedback since then. Now to get my CIA gum up, A game up to par. You are already up to par, Tiff. Um, ooh, Diz. God, I'm so sorry. It's really bad, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Next, so once you have your like CI community, community in your building, the next one is pretty obvious and it's your, um, your parent community. There are so many ways to build your parent community. Tiffany already talked about one. Um, last year at St. Martin's and the year before, I had a total of six minutes with my parents, which is no time. Like you have six minute rotations the parents, it was really cool because the parents followed like their student's schedule. So my first period parents all came together. Then my second period parents all came together. So they followed their kid's schedule and um, he's so naughty. And um, that was cool. But six minutes, I was like, how am I going to do what I need to do in six minutes? So I'm going to copy and paste a link for you. Okay, I'm pasting a link into the comments, and it is um, a link to, look at this cat now, he's calmed down. Um, it's a link to my parent night demo, or open house demo, and even if you only have six minutes, this is such a powerful tool to use with your parents. Um, it's a free presentation on Teachers Pay Teachers, you can download it, and it depending on how long you have with them, you can cut out different sections that you don't want to use. Um, I was told I get 15 to 20 minutes with my parents on parent night on September 11th. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, so depending on how much time you, with, you have with them, choose a CI demonstration, even if it's the English one that I have written in there, to model for them what is learning over acquisition, acquisition over learning. What is the difference between the two? Because you really want parents to leave your room understanding that my student is not learning French. My student is not learning Japanese. My student is acquiring a language. Because your class is not a linguistics class. You would love to inspire your children enough to want to take linguistics 
when they are proficient in the language because they have a new uh, an affinity for Spanish. So they want to now take Spanish linguistics. But you are not teaching linguistics in Spanish 1. In Spanish 1, you are helping to start your student's acquisition journey and journey to proficiency. And hopefully starting to build in them a real love for people, culture, and language. That's your job. So that's what needs to be communicated to parents. And the best way to do that is to model what it is you're doing in class. Because my rubric, and I should have pulled that one up already too. My rubric, my rubric and syllabus, um, I provide with them on front, back, side, like one sheet of paper, just syllabus on the front, rubric on the back. And they immediately see that here. There we go. There, it's copied in the comments. They immediately see that my, um, in my class, participation, because I call it that for parents. In my grade book, it's not called that. For my admin, it's not called that. But in their minds, it looks like participation. So participation in my class is 60% of their grade. That is really interpersonal and interpretive communication. Actual says we have three modes, interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational. Actual themselves say we should be doing presentational a lot less than the other two. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like, here's my syllabus, 60% of their grade in my class is just coming ready to learn and responding to my questions doing the gestures, and being positive. That's it. Here's the rubric for it. And so when the parents are actually experiencing it and experiencing why, they're like, oh, that's why it's 60% of the grade. It's all you do in here. If I'm not participating, I'm not acquiring. I'm like, oh, look at you using the word acquiring. Good job, yeah. So depending on how much time you have with them, it can be done in three to six minutes. You can start to like build that understanding. Obviously, the hope is for more. A lot of people will say, but what happens if I don't have um, a parent's night like that? Like my parent night is more um, people are invited to the school and then we all have open classrooms and um, you can like float to classroom to classroom to classroom, but you can't, um, it, it's not like scheduled time. I push back on that and I'd say that's fine because that's how your school is doing it, but have a flyer when they come in, like one of those big chart papers or butcher paper, write up. If your child is in Spanish or if your child is in French or if your child is in German, please come to room blah, blah, blah between blank and blank and put Make a 10 minute gap yourself. Yes, run it by admin or don't. <laughs> and just put it up there so that you can ha create that 10 minute thing. Will people be standing? Yes. Does it matter? No, because you want to give them a real snapshot of what your classroom looks like and build that cheer squad, right? So parents leave excited. Parents leave, I always have kids come back being like, Maestra, my mom was like, I want to take Spanish with you. I want to, like, that's the community and cheer squad you want because then they're in your boat. You have them. You have them. And unfortunately, teachers who aren't doing this in the building, they don't have that support that you do. So then another way to build it is um, anytime you have, like, a, if you teach, I, I did it in middle school, my last school. It all depends on the school you're at. My last school, um, they had a grandparents' day, but it wasn't just for lower school students. It was for middle, high school, lower school, all of them. And grandparents could come and, like, shadow their grandchild. 
I didn't stop. Most teachers were like, oh, we'll do a cute grandparents activity. I'm like, nope. They can do whatever we were doing before. Like if we were building off of a movie doc from the day before and doing a reading, we're doing a reading. If we're starting a new movie doc, we're doing a movie doc. If we're doing a story, I'm having grandparents get up and act. And grandparents are doing the brain breaks. Oh my gosh, there is nothing like having grandparents support you. And I had little sweet old lady and sweet old man come up to me countless you were the only girl I could hear. You were the only teacher I could hear. And I'm like, sorry, I'm a little loud. And they're like, no, thank you so much. You were the only person I could hear. And, and they just spend the whole time laughing their butts off. They go home and tell all their little friends in their bridge club and all their little clubs about their child's name teacher. I had grandparents not at the school writing me emails asking if they could come and see my class because their friends were talking about it. Build your cheer squad. It makes your job so much more fun and so much easier. Um, Alyssa is doing a shout out saying, hey, Jerry, um, use your PowerPoint presentation for our parent night last week. Yay. It was an absolute hit. Thank you. We had 10 minutes. 10 minutes is awesome. I also just got your circumlocution posters. <laughs> Aren't they cool? I can't wait to put them up. They, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about them. I mean, I've always had them, but I always hand make them to have these beautiful rainbow posters that are so me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, first time jumping in this year with CI. I'm so excited for you, Deborah. I haven't figured it all out yet. You won't. That's okay. It's a long journey. Met you in Michigan at Mitten CI. Awesome. Um, what do I need more than anything else? Patience. That's it. Patience with yourself. Because you already started that first sentence. Third sentence was, I haven't figured it all out yet. That's normal. This methodology is so hard to learn. It's so hard to learn and it's a process. So be patient with yourself and patient with the kids as they're figuring out this new way of doing it. Because if you're teaching kids with CI that you previously taught otherwise, they're gonna be like, what are you doing? This is so different, this is so weird. Um, okay, so, hey Tina. Um, or don't, I don't know what that's about, Tiff. Um, I need to take a break to get in my building. If I save the video, can I watch the whole thing over later? Yeah, you can. Sorry, I saw that late. Um, where are the posters? Let me get them for you. Well, let me link to the blog because um, that's more it's easier to access is the blog. Okay, here's the blog to me talking about the posters and then there's a link to the posters in there. Um, yeah, they're on Teacher's Discovery. Do you ask students to fill out the rubric after every class? No, because that'd be a lot of work. The beginning of the year, they do it three times the first week, a couple times the next week, just to calibrate. Um, I talked about this in my first, um, first video, um, first week of school. Um, so you might want to read that or listen to that video, but um, you just are calibrating at first because you need them to understand what interpersonal and interpretive communication looks like in your room so that you're all on the same page and then after that they just know that you're grading them every day. Are you really grading them every day? No. Hi Sarah Buckley. Um, you're the bomb. No, you're the bomb. Um, Courtney, I'd love to hear more about the rubric. Courtney, let me just post or I already posted it. Courtney, if you scroll up and um, look at my comments, um, I posted, um, I think that was Courtney. I posted the rubric up above, my rubric and syllabus, so you can read that. Um, can you talk more about staying positive with a class of nice kids, but who just really wants to socialize relentlessly? I want to stay positive, but I str it's a struggle. You have to. And that class needs more love than all your other ones. The most frustrating classes need more love and more positivity than all your other classes. And I know it's hard and it sucks. 
but you have to stay relentlessly positive. So Melissa, find ways, make sure you have a call response or a noise or something that means everybody gets silent. Constantly reference your rules. Constantly, like literally physically touch your rules. Stop, physically touch your rules. Smile, like be relentlessly positive with them that they can do it. And then go back to the why. They need to know why. Link it to the why. Okay, guys, I know we're having a lot of side conversations right now. Um, remember, a lot of the side conversations about, are about what you're doing. So don't always assume that they're about something else. They might be. But link it back to, okay, does anybody, can it, somebody tell me why it is we can't have side conversations in here? And what language are you speaking in with your side conversations? Yeah, so that really it distracts from our language acquisition brain when we're like thinking in English and hearing this person speak in English, but at the same time I'm speaking in Spanish and I just got to get back on track. So let's try again. And like relentlessly just stop them and be patient. And relentlessly stop them and smile and be patient. That's going to get annoying for them. They're going to give in. They're going to give in. Um, and it is really, really hard, Melissa. Um, I'm not saying it's not. I mean, I've, I, if you go to, oh, God. It was the last video I did. I'm pretty sure. Wasn't it, guys? I think live with Loca Numero Tres was me talking about, like, the relentlessly positive building relationships, building community. Don and Tina with the hearts. It's like a com competition right now. <laughs> I love you so much. Um, and there's something really hurting my leg. Ouch. It's a tag. $3 tag. Um, you have to be relentlessly positive. Okay, back to cheer squad. OMG, 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 every word coming out of your mouth right now and about preach truth. <gasps> Thanks, Tina. Mm. Okay, so um, next. Parent, back to your parent community. So you've built this on parent night. Depending on when your parent night is. I have a full week of school before parent night. My plan is to make lots of positive phone calls home next week. School starts on Tuesday. I'll get kids Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now I'm looking at my calendar slyly in the corner, maybe. If it's just bouncing, it's not coming up. And then I get the Monday, the 10th, and then Tuesday, the 11th, is parents' night. Before I even meet some of these parents, I want to make some positive phone calls home and say, oh, my gosh. Your student is so eager to acquire Spanish. It's going to be an awesome year. This happened in class today. Just wanted to let you know. I'm so lucky to be at this school, and I'm so lucky to have your scholar in my class. Thanks. Can't wait to meet you on Parents' Night. Next person. I'm going to make lots of positive phone calls home. The reason for this is later on, if I really need to make a call home that's not so positive, if I've already made positive phone calls home, they're already in my boat because I called them, and they were like, but he was doing so great. You told me he was like really into it. And so they're automatically more supportive of me if I've already called them and given them positive feedback. Two, if I make phone calls home before my back to school night, they're like, you're the Spanish teacher that called me in the first week of school. They're awesome. Like, nice to meet you. Um, but I'm, I'm constantly working to build that parent community and build my support from them. So once I have parents night, my positive phone calls home can't stop, right? So I need to continue with the positive phone calls home, like telling parents what I'm loving, what I'm hearing, like when they're really brave and they start outputting, I want to praise, praise, praise that because they're going to say, I heard you spoke in Spanish today. My is just really proud of you. Guess what they're going to come back doing? continuing speaking Spanish, right? So positive phone calls home. Track these. And not just in, yes, you should be mandated to track these, period. And if you're not, you need to. So track them in school runner or whatever your school uses. 
um, to like track communications with parents. And that's important because it also shows admin that you're making positive phone calls home. It also shows other teachers in your building that, okay, I have to call home to Pablo's house tonight. Oh, with about with something frustrating and negative. Oh, but look, my issue called last week, so it's something positive, so maybe it won't be too hard. Or, uh oh, my issue called home about something negative already today. It's probably not such a good idea that I that I handle this right now. They're probably already frustrated and upset. So track them for sure, but have a secondary tracking machine, which is literally for me, it's a clipboard in my desk. I already have it made of all of my rosters. And it's just checkbox. There's like columns. And all I do is I write a plus or a negative or a neutral. Neutral is just a, um, you can make a neutral like, like a circle with a, a thingy, whatever. Make a neutral. Um, so plus, negative, or neutral. Neutral would be you're calling home about an event happening, something like that. And then the date. So in the column next to the name, if you make a positive phone call home, you do a plus sign plus the date. So you're tracking who you call home for because you need to make it a goal. I, I try and say every semester I'm calling home at least one time, at least one time with a positive, positive phone call home, at least one time. One of the easiest things to do um, to hold yourself to this is to create or find a person in your department who wanted who wants to do this together. So like you schedule a half hour once a week where you guys sit down during your planning or right after school and you bust out X amount of phone calls home. Or I have another girl in my building, Michelle, and we're gonna write um, positive notes to our kids once a week. Not every single child, but we're gonna sit down, get some cute cards, write positive notes to them, and we're gonna hold each other accountable to that by making it a meeting time where once a week we're gonna play loud music, sit in one of each other's rooms, one of our rooms, and just write some positive notes to the kids. Um, but you're constantly tracking these things to hold yourself accountable to make it equitable, not equal, equitable, right? Um, Alyssa, I do the stop and point thing and lately have had the kids get mad and say I'm not teaching them. You can't teach them until they're doing what you need them to do. Remind them of that. Say, I, I totally understand. Some of you are really frustrated. You really, really want me to get back to the Spanish, but I can't. I can't until we're all in the same understanding of what it needs to look like in here. So I'm gonna remind us again what it needs to look like. Can somebody tell me why it needs to look like that? Okay, we're just gonna keep on doing this until we're all in the same understanding, and then we can really move on. Um, I do, 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 do. I just have a protest and say, claim it's my fault other students are getting off topic because I'm not teaching. I knew the school and CI only suggestions. Okay. Um, it's my fault other students get off task because I'm not teaching. I, want, I wonder if you mean because you're doing CI and not something more traditional. I wonder if that's what they're saying. Um, it sounds like you, um, your students need to feel more, work on your building more relationships. So when you are teaching, um, since you're doing CI and you're so lucky to do CI, I would do PQA almost every day, just finding out about them. Because um, go back and watch my, I'm going to find it. I'm just going to post it. Hold on. Um, if you go back and watch my Live with Loka 3, where it's talking about building relationships, um, if you focus more on that and mostly just talking about them, they're going to be more intrigued to listen because they love themselves. And um, so you're building that community and those relationships in your room and simultaneously, hopefully, reminding them that see how great today was and when you have those good days you got to stop everything and be like today was awesome oh my gosh it was so effective today everybody was in i had a hundred percent participation um hold on one second let me post that video there it is okay 
Um, here it is. Here's the video, the last video I did. Discipline before instruction always. You're doing it right. I agree. I think you have to just take the time, pause, and, and try and beat out the negativity with your positivity, your relentless positivity. Um, okay. Norming, norming, routines, routines. Yes. Routines, 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 routines. Kids crave routines. High schoolers need routines. Everybody needs routines. <sighs> okay. So um, once you have that, um, so track your communication. Make sure you're doing enough to everyone all the time. And um, the next thing I do, a lot of you are going to say, oh, but I don't have time. And my pushback is, my pushback is make the time. Um, you can do this quarterly if you want. You don't have to do it monthly. Um, I do my monthly. Um, I do a monthly newsletter. And the reason I'm going to push you is because you can totally steal what I've already written and, like, put it into your own words, make it a little less loca and a little more you. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to post two links for you. The first link I'm going to post, hi, my Kristen is a blog I wrote about the newsletters. And the second link I'm gonna post is I'm gonna post a link to my webpage where I have these newsletters and you can just click on the PDFs and look at them. Um, before you ask, I'll tell you what um, system I use to create them because people are like, oh, but it looks so nice, I don't have that. It's pages on a Mac. So if you don't have a Mac, um, maybe somebody in your school does or like the computer lab in your school does, and they have the pages app. So you just write it in pages. There's a newsletter format. You just copy that. Once you've done it once, and I think I even, no, I don't know if I linked to it, but once you've done it once, you just replace the photos. The thing about the newsletter is not all my parents read it. But the ones who did loved it, they told my principal, my principal, this was in lower school, why I'm talking lower school, asked for more teachers to start writing it, which, yes, caused a little bit of friction. They were like, why are you doing this and raising expectations? But the big thing was parents just love hearing about what their kids are doing in the classroom. Not all parents, but so many parents really appreciate it because it gives them a window of communication with their kids. A lot of times, when you, you know this, if you have kids or you have God, fairy godchildren or whatever, and you ask them, what'd you do in school today? Nothing much, we did learn it, we learned. It's like, what'd you learn about? Uh, Isla right now, Isla's like, we colored. I'm like, well, what'd you color? She's like, stuff, and I'm like, okay. And, she, and I'm like, well, did you sing any songs? Yeah. Well, what songs did you sing? Letter songs. What? Well, oh, cool. What letter are you learning about? I don't remember. Can I play now? Like, there's not a lot of interest around it. Whereas when her teacher sends a newsletter home, even an email with bullet points, it's like, we're doing the letter N this week. Um, this is the little school prayer we learned. Um, we're also exploring this animal and where it lives. I then have talking points because for a lot of them, guys, an eight-hour school day, it's hard to remember what you did. It's hard to remember what you did in first period. Can you be mad at a kid for not remembering what they did in first period? No. Or what she did before nap? No. So um, if I have talking points around it from this newsletter from Maestra that's talking about movie talk and I can be like, so what's movie talk in your Spanish class? The kid can then be like, oh, it's this thing where she pulls up this YouTube video. I've had parents say, my kid, thanks for that talking point because my kid pulled up some of the videos you've done in class. So funny. Or I talk about Senior Wooly and they're like, oh, it was so funny. They pulled up their Senior Wooly account and totally understand why they're obsessed. Um, and all it's doing is giving them windows to communicate with their kids, which is really cool. And in every letter, I also talked about like something about the method, like this is what I'm doing here. Or it gave me a window to talk about like um, 
upcoming competitions that might be happening or conference I'm going to and why I'm going. Um, but it, it's a powerful tool to communicate and keep that communication open with your parents. Um, you're an angel for sharing so much with you with us. Love you guys. Thank you so much. How do you send the newsletter home? Good question, Monica. So um, in my old school, I would email it. So I would, it's always really, 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 really crucially important, you guys, when you email parents home, you need to do blind copy everybody. Blind copy everybody. Um, my current school has a green initiative, which is so awesome because my last school, it was so horrendously bad. Like the recycling, I was told by the people picking it up was just going to the trash. Like there was no, it was awful. And Louisiana in general sucks at recycling in comparison to other places where I've lived, like Colorado is so green. Um, but um, my new school is very green conscious, except for we, I have now a huge community. Um, I think 50, 60% of my kids are high poverty, low income. Um, so access to technology, I can't count on that. I can't bank on it. So I'm going to um, send a double-sided copy of my newsletter home as paper and email it out. So I'm going to do both this year. Um, and that's important because I want equitable access to all my parents, and I want them all to feel like I am communicating with them. Um, hi, Lillian. I love you, too. Camille, hi. Um, hi, Alyssa. Hi, Ryan. Um, so that's, that's why I do, um, I'm going to do both this year. Um, but I really, really value the newsletter. I think it's really, really important. Um, okay. So community in your bill, I talked about that already. Talked about parent communication, talked about letters or calls home. Um, so once you have all of these things, community within your building, a community within your parents, a community within your kids, you created this amazing cheer squad where yes it takes a lot of work up front but as the years go on even you have to do less and less work to build that cheer squad because you already have it because you already have that community who knows what you're doing my cheer squad building started with open house last week on friday it was an open house to see our brand new building um, these families are so grateful and excited to be in a building that is ours now because um, we've been in several buildings. Um, I say we, I just joined the team, but they've been in several buildings over the years, all temporary, a synagogue and then Holy Rosary. And so it's so exciting that Brick Lodge has a school now, which is a really, really big deal. But these parents came by for open house to see the classrooms um, and get to know the teachers. And already I'm building my cheer squad. Like they're like immediately, it's the typical parent. I'm excited for my child to have a language. I took six years. I can't say anything. And I'm like, well, that's because of how you learned. You learned instead of acquired. Your child's going to acquire language. And they're like, what? How cool. I had one lady tear up, start to cry. She came to me. It broke my heart. <laughs> this mommy, she came to me and she said, I have to tell you, my son is going to take Spanish with you, and I'm so excited because it's something that I always wanted to learn. I took it for two years in college, and the nun that taught it um, said she'd pass me my second year if I swore on the Bible that I would never take another language ever again as long as I live um, because I'm just not cut out for it. So as long as I swore to her and to God that I would never take language again, she would pass me. And so I'm just so excited for my student. And I was like, I said, can I hug you? I'm going to hug you and take all that negative energy away because you are a language person because all people are language people. I said, you're speaking English to me right now. You're an excellent communicator. So I guarantee you'd be an excellent communicator in Spanish. I know angry faces are allowed there. Like that's so, is that not the most heartbreaking story that this woman, I mean, I'm like this poor woman. So I hugged her. I said, I'm taking all of that away. I said, 
I have taught adult classes in the past. I don't know that I'm up for it this year. I don't know if I can. And I said, but God, you make me want to just for you to prove to you that you can acquire language and that you'd be awesome at it. She said, no, you. I'm really bad. She was right. Like, I'm really bad at it. I don't get it. And I, I couldn't remember all the rules. And I'm like, that's because you were learning rules. You shouldn't learn language you should acquire language if the goal is communication then it should be acquisition if the goal is linguistics then you should be learning period you are an excellent communicator you are so capable and i'm so sorry you had such an ugly experience i wish i could take your pain away and so then she's crying and she's like i'm so excited for my son to have this um so i've already built a cheer squad and I haven't even taught a child yet. Like, it's so important to constantly thinking about how to, I know, how terrible, huh? Um, so I'm just really excited. Anyways, um, the last thing I will say is it. I have taught adult classes the last three years. And I choose one night a week. I did it beginning at 6.45, 7 o'clock. And I did an I did it for an hour and a half, um, and it was powerful. It was really powerful. It was open to community, and um, Jenna does this too. It was open to like the community around my school and parents in my school, and my parents and my mother-in-law were the people who came every single time without fail, and they loved it, and I loved it. But it was very, I made it free so that there was no, like, pressure to, if you don't have five bucks this time, you don't have to feel like you have to come. Um, but it was donation-based, and so people were able to donate. But what ended up happening was, like, I'd start with a group of 70 excited people. And then it dwindled to 30 and then sometimes it'd get back up to 45 and then all of a sudden I'd have five people and then I'd have 20 people and then I'd have five people. And it was always my mommy putting in $20. Who doesn't have money? My mommy is an artist on Jackson Square. My daddy works his ass off. But it's like, they don't have money to give me and my parents are the ones donating to me. And then it ended up being so much prep work because I prepped a hundred times more for my adults than I ever did for my kids because my kids I can totally go with the flow with adults I needed more pathways of which way it could go because they're so reluctant to speak and just to give me stuff to work off of kids will just go and there's so much you can do it's totally easy to be non-targeted with adults I have to have more of a plan and they want more specific language based on what they do in their professional lives. So I ended up planning so much and then getting home at like 9.30 at night before having, I, not, I haven't had dinner. I haven't had, I missed seeing Isla Rose because she's already in bed. I'm grumpy and tired for Paul. I um, am making sometimes a hundred bucks and sometimes 20 because my mom puts it in and I don't even want her money. So I, every single year it's come to like March and I burn out and I have literally an awful mental breakdown and I have to cancel the classes. A hundred percent of them understand, but it's to the point where like only five people are constantly showing up anyways. And occasionally a burst of 20 show up, but it wasn't consistent enough and there wasn't committal because there wasn't money invested, right? But I also didn't want to do the money because I knew there were certain people who definitely wouldn't come because they can't afford it. So if you can, I think if I were to do it again, I would do it at an earlier time, like even four o'clock. And the people can make it would make it. People who can't, can't. But that way, I'm not stretching myself too thin because really, guys, we do so much. It was so much for me to offer that extra class. Yes, it helped build more community, but it tore me down. So you have to know your limits in it, if that makes sense. Um, that's harsh. I had seventh grade teacher tell me I couldn't sing and it was cut out. I wasn't cut out for choir. It stuck. You will never know how their words are felt. It's the most important thing. It's what I tell people all the time. 
What is the teacher you remember most from school? 80% of people normally talk about somebody who had an incredible impact on their life and was really powerful and really moving and really meaningful. And a lot of times it's the reason they're a teacher. And the other 20% bring up somebody who is really toxic, like your choir teacher. Tiffany, you're a, a mom, a teacher. You are living your best life. You're incredible. And yet it's still visceral to remember that seventh grade choir teacher. Don't be that person ever for a child that they remember 30 years down the road, 50 years down the road. I met a 72 year old this summer who remembered a third grade teacher like it was yesterday and how they made the entire class fear, feel and fear every day. Don't be that person. Um, I so wish our district curriculum people would look into this more. Keep pushing, Catherine. You do your thing. If you keep on sticking to your track and preaching, fighting the good fight, uh, and building your cheer squad, they'll push for it. That's what'll happen. So true, adults require more prep for me too. It's crazy, Kristen. It's tough. It's really tough. Um, Chris, Christoph, I haven't talked to you in forever. Hi, Christoph. Oh my gosh, your baby is so cute. Oh my gosh, hi. Um, knowing your limits is the key. It is, and I'm getting better at that. Um, it's a challenge, though, because I want to give and give and give, but I'm my one of my goals, my personal goals this year, is learning when to say no, and that it's totally okay to say no. I'm getting better at it, um, but I can only do so much. I can only do so much. Um, okay, my friends, it has been an hour and two minutes um, of how to build your CI community and cheer squad, and I hope it's helped you. Um, thank you for joining me on a Sunday morning. We had, looks like over 80 people in and out. No, 103 people in and out, so yay. Um, I'm going to download this. Tina, you are loving on me. I love it. Thank you. Um, I'm going to download this now, upload it to YouTube, eventually put it on my blog. I haven't put the third one on my blog yet. Sorry. I have a lot going on. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get to work today. Um, I hope you have a great Sunday, a great weekend. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for um, always pushing me to be better. The next one, actually, if you just wait there right now, one second, I can find out, I can figure out when the next one is. Ugh, sorry, I should have had that ready. I didn't have it ready. It's been a crazy morning already. One second. If you need to go, that's fine. But um, I'm going to find out when the next one is. Um, there we go. Okay. No, it's not then. Shoot. Hold on one second. Oh, it's next Saturday. It's next Saturday the 8th. Is it the 8th? Yeah, next Saturday the 8th. Um, I'm going to do Live with La Loca on Saturday the 8th, and I'm going to make a little poster for it and put it out there on on Facebook, on Twitter, I'll put it in the comments here. I'll work on that next. So within the next hour, um, you'll have information on the next Live with Loca, but it's going to be next Saturday the 8th um, during the daytime. Okay, love you lots. I hope your day is awesome. Um, I hope you do something fun and for yourself today. Fun day Sunday, no judgments on Sunday. Um, I'm going to go check on my fiancé who's still in bed, and I love you all. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. Adios. We then say.